Well, too, and this is kind of cute. Uh, it starts with a little uh, cartoon. It says, I hear you're looking for an average trooper to put on the recruiting poster. I'm your man, sir. I'm average height, average weight, average looks, average age, average intelligence, have average likes, average dislikes. And then the guy says, that'll be all, Glubenzon Kerfheimer. <laughs> so the joke is he doesn't have an average last name. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so according to researchers, Robert, the average American guy, is 31 years old, 5 feet 10 inches tall, 172 pounds, works 6.1 hours daily, and sleeps 7.7 .7 hours. These numbers represent what is average or typical of American men. For statistics, such values are known as measures of central tendency. So really all statistics are, are calculations on data to help us understand data better. We have these statistics. And some of them, especially the ones that we're gonna look at today, are familiar statistics to you. So we're gonna tweak it a little bit by looking at the data is presented in a different way and you have to kind of decode the way it's presented. But actually doing the calculations is probably gonna be somewhat familiar to you um, from just living. I mean, you probably have a sense of what an average is, how to compute a mean, and that sort of thing. Um, so there are measures of central tendency because they are generally located toward the center of the distribution. For such measures, um, we're going to talk about four measures in this section. The mean, the median, the mode, and the mid-range. And each measure of central tendency is calculated in a different way. Thus, it's better to use a specific term than to use a generic descriptive term like average. So when you hear, and, and I don't know how much you pay attention to this in the, in the news, but, for example, if we had Bill Gates came in and sat down at the corner here, and then just to do a statistical analysis, I asked everyone to write down their average annual salary, or to write down their annual salary, put it on a sheet of paper, not with their name, you know, and then I just collected that and put it in and calculated the average. How would it look? How would our average salary look compared to for everyone? We, we, we would all be happy, wouldn't we? <laughs> we'd be making like, you know, $100 billion a year or something. And that's because Bill Gates... 700 billion that he makes every year got kind of meshed in with our average. So the average or the mean is not a good calculation for him. But, I mean, for the class if he's in it. But the, a better measure would be the median. The median is the middle um, value when, if you were to order them. So I would take all of your average salaries and I would just order them from lowest to highest and I would pick the one in the middle, and we would never even know that Bill Gates was in the classroom if I did that. Does that make sense? So depending on the situation. So in the newspaper, you often see median income um, and median average cost of a home. Those are the numbers, or median cost of a home. See, I, I put average in there, and I should have. So the median cost of a home or the median income instead of the average cost of a home or the average income because really, really expensive homes can skew the average away from what about 50% of the population is living in. Does that make sense? Okay, so different, different measures for different situations. Here are the formulas that you'll use in this section. The mean is the sum of the data items divided by the number of items. So you just add them up and divide by n. So this is kind of scary Greek notation. It just means add them up. That's <coughs> add them add them up and divide by the total number. The median is, um, you have to order the data from smallest to largest. And then it depends, if you have an even number of data values, you pick the middle two so that you have the same amount on either side and find the average of those two. So you just add them together and divide by two. If you have an odd number of data values, the middle one will be the number where you have one on the same amount on each side. So it depends on what happens. When you're looking at the median, remember you're, the data is ordered in position. And so uh, you can also look at if the, if the data is arranged in order from smallest to largest, you can take the number, the n is always the total, what we'll call sample size, so the total number, like the number of students in the class. So you do n plus 1 and then you divide by 2, and that's going to be the position that the median is located in if it's ordered. So like position one, position two, position three, that would be the position. We'll look at that in a minute. The mode is the data value that occurs most often in the data set. If more than one data value has the highest frequency, then each of these data sets is the mode. So if, 
if there's a tie for most often like maybe 25 occurs four times and 29 occurs four times, then both 25 and 29 would be the mode. But if they each occur just once, then there's no mode. The mid-range is found by adding the lowest and the highest data value and dividing the sum by two. Okay, now a lot of the homework, you notice that I started on number 13, because a lot of the homework is just find the mean, find the median, find, you know, it's, it's boring. So I decided to start with the more interesting ones where you are asked to find all four of the calculations. So you'll be able to do the easy homework once you know how to do this homework, okay? Um, and there's, there's all different types of ways that you can do this. I found a really fun website that um, I would recommend you, I, I think I, I'm gonna put together a cool website list, and this one I found was really, really neat. All I did was statistics calculator in the um, you know, in the Google search bar, and I'll show you. I got to this one, or maybe I did me, I can't remember what I did. But anyway, I typed in something into Google, and I got this calculator right here, where you just enter the date, you just enter the numbers with a comma, and then hit calculate, and it's going to give you the mean, the median, and the mode. And then it's going to put them in ascending order, so it's so easy. Okay, so the link is actually it's in it's going to be in the notes, and I'll put it up. Um, uh, I'll put it up for for you to to look at here. I can um, let's see if I I put it in in these notes from the last class. Let me get that. I'll put it over in your notes too. Because so, um, I'm not even sure. I mean, I'll show you how to do it with your calculator, but I'll tell you this this website's really awesome. Okay, so it's in your notes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do it. I'm going to do this first data set in with this cool calculator. So we do 125, and you just do a comma. 143. 145, 132, 142, 119, 142, 118, 137, 136, 132, 148, 132, and 136. Okay? And then um, you hit, oh, I don't know, calculate. Yes. And then <laughs> you're done. So the total number of numbers is your N. So that's the 14. The mean is 134.5. Um, Five seven, which I think on this homework they want it rounded to the nearest ten, so one hundred and thirty four point six. The median. Wait, they were kind of look how nice they were. They showed you what you had to do to find the median. Um, you have in this set of data, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 data sets, right? And this is in order. So when that happens, you, you do 14 plus 1 is 15, divided by 2 is 7 and a half, right? So you need, once the data is ordered, the median is going to be in the 7 and a half position, which is the average of 7 and 8. Does that make sense? So if you count location, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you're going to have this number, the 132, and the 136. That's place 7 and place 8. No? Making sense or no? Wait, no? Is that a no? Okay. Well, because there's 14, it's an even number, you can't find the exact middle. But the, both of them will give you, let's see, uh, 6 on either side. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, but it's not both of them because you add them together. It's the average of them and divide by 2, which is where they get the 134 from. That's why they did 132 plus 136 divided by 2. And then the mode is the number that appears most often, and you, it's easy to see that it occur, the 132 occurs, uh, looks like, four times, and that's more than any of the others. Does that make sense? Okay, so that is a fun um, website as a tool for you guys. Um, but let me show you how to do it with your calculator. 
because you did pay a lot of money for your calculator. So you might like to know how to do that with that. And the mode is 132. And the other reason you might want to do it with your calculator is because uh, if you take the statistics class 1342, we do it with the calculator and we do a lot of the calculations with the calculator. And this little set of commands is a little bit worth learning first because it's a little bit confusing, so you'll have a heads up. So if you have a TI-84, follow along with me. Just go ahead and clear, be clear on your screen. So you're going to do statistics, so you hit the stat button. And then the first thing you need to do is get the data into your calculator. And the way you do that is through the editing tool, and you can edit into a column of data, a column of data. So notice that the word edit is highlighted, so I'm going to hit enter. So I did stat, and then I did edit. And I'm going to have, I'll put a sheet out that tells you the exact steps for this, because it's a little bit complicated. So all of you that are using the 84, did you get to stat and then to edit? And you may be in a... The stat is, um, okay, it says stat. It's, I know, there's a lot of buttons there. Okay. All right, now you're in this screen and you may or may not have data in here. In order to clear, clear the data, this is the, one of the tricky things. You have to go up to the name of the list, which is up in L1. So I'm going to move my up arrow so L1 is highlighted. Do you all see that? Now, do you notice that all of these numbers are down here? from the column, they're all down here. Do y'all see that? They're in the row, okay. If I hit the clear button, notice how they all cleared out down there? And then if I hit the down arrow, they'll be gone. So it's a little, I have a little cheer for it. It goes up, clear down, okay? Now, if you do up, delete down, you're in trouble because you delete the whole column, which I can get back to you, but I'd really rather you just not hit delete, even though it feels good. Hit clear. So you do up, clear down, and then it's all cleared out. Okay? Now you're going to go through and enter the data in. So this is going to be 125, 143, 145. And I'll stop talking now. So I'm just entering the data. Everybody good? Yeah? Okay. So now, um, we can go, I, I guess a good way to do this is just to get back to the home screen. So if you want to get back to the home screen, out of this screen, you go second quick. Whenever you get somewhere you don't want to be on your calculator, if you do the second and the mode button, it quits you and takes you back to where you can just add, subtract, multiply, divide. Does that make sense? Okay. So then what you're going to do is... Um, Okay, second and then quit, because you want to quit, get back to the home screen. Quit is right next to second. It's the mode button. And that just takes you back to the home screen. Now, your home screen should be clear. If it's not, just hit clear so you're all ready to go. Okay, now we want our calculator to do the statistics on our data. So we will hit the stat button again, but we want it to actually calculate the statistics. So I'm going to move my arrow over to calculate. And then choice one is the one var statistics, and that's what I want to do, okay? One var stats. So I'm going to hit enter, and you, it should take you back to this screen with the word one var stats. Everybody? Yeah. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to tell it what column do you want to do the one var stats on. And that's when you tell it, well, I put my data in L1, so notice that L1 is the blue function of the one or, you know, it's the second function for the number one. So you have to hit second and then number one. So if you had put your data in L2, you could have said second L2. Does that make sense? 
And then I hit enter, and I get a bunch of stuff. Oh, and I have a mistake, obviously, in mine, because this is good modeling. <laughs> I'm not getting the same average. That first number should have been 134.6, but I got 133. So that tells me I'm going to have to go back and look at my data. I must have missed one. Sorry. What, what, can you all see it? Okay. It's, it's towards the end. Okay, hold on a second. 125, 143, 143. Okay, I'll find it myself. <laughs> well, it's because I can't see. I can't, I can't deal with these shells. It's right there, right? No? Is that what you're all saying? I don't have enough 142? No, I got that. 136. I'm sorry for being here. I was, it was actually very I was trying to be funny. But it may have come across that. And then do I need 132 twice? I missed a bunch of them. Is that right? All right. Okay. So then I just actually modeled a good thing, which is when you're, when you're working statistics, statistics isn't hard, but you have to be precise in the data that you enter. So you always want to kind of double check and that sort of thing. So we'll do stat and then over to calc and then choice one. And then second L1, try it again and see. Okay, that's a little better. Maybe that looks like yours now. Okay, this first window, this, notice, do you see how it has a little, it's flashing, it's got a little arrow? Do y'all see that? If you do the down arrow, you can get some more stuff. Um, and this is all good stuff. I don't know that we'll do too much of it in this class, but in, if you were taking a statistics class, you would use all of these numbers, or most of them. So you need this second set of data as well, so I'll just put that down there. All right. So this number right here is the mean, and uh, the median is right here. And this other stuff you get to learn about later. The mid-range, remember, is the one that we don't, the mode you just have to pick out. You would just have to count, count it and, and see it. Um, the mid-range is the lowest plus the highest. So the lowest number was 119. The highest number was 148. And then you divide that by 2. And so that is 119 plus 148 divided by 2. 133.5 is your mid-range. So we have our mean, our median, our mode, and our mid-range. Everybody okay on how we got these numbers? The computer, that little computer website was a lot more fun, wasn't it? Do your numbers match okay? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I will put out a little list explaining exactly how to do that with your calculator. Again, a little worksheet if, if you want. Now, I will take a... Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. I will take a second to just remind you that Excel is always your friend. You can, I did the data on cheating because I already did this data. And I actually, one thing that was fun, I put the data in and then I highlighted the data, which I don't know if I want to highlight it. Okay, I got to get daddy. Hold on. Get the daddy. Hold on. See how you get the daddy? Okay, if you highlight the data and then do sort, it'll let you sort it. And so that's what I had already done. I sorted it from smallest to largest, so that was kind of fun. And then it's easy to pick out that mode right there. Um, and then to get this number, I just did the equal sign, and then I typed in average, and then I told it the column that I wanted. So I did a parenthesis, and I did A1 to A14. And then this number is the median. And I, actually, I can probably do mode. Um, I'll do that for you. If you come in here and you do equals and then mode and then parenthesis and then close parenthesis, it gives you the mode, right? And I don't know if it has a mid range. Um, it's kind of actually a weird, a, a weird, a weird calculation. It returns middle. Yeah, it, it doesn't have mid range. That. It really, mid-range is, this author seems to like it, but it's not one that I've seen a lot, so. It's just the lowest plus the highest divided by two. No big deal. Okay, um, I guess if you wanted to be snazzy in here, you could do, um, 
you could do equals, and then you could do two parentheses, um, and then you would do the max of the of the data set. Plus the min, or I guess I should have been, it's the min plus the low, plus the min. And then close that parenthesis, divide by two, and then close that parenthesis. And then hit enter, and it'll, it'll do that. If you wanted to write a little calculation for you, it's kind of cool, I guess. Okay, so we're okay with Excel, we're okay with our calculators. You, you know, on a good day, if you just have your phone, you can add them up and divide by the total. You can do this, and you can order them by hand and pick the middle ones. You can do it all by hand if you want, however you want to do these calculations. All right, so we're going to continue and look at some interesting ways that the data may be um, presented to you. In this chart, what has happened is that that you're told the, diff, the number of miles per gallon for 62 foreign cars, but you're given the frequency that it has, has occurred. Instead of them giving you the list of 62 data values, because there were some repeats, they went ahead and just gave you this frequency calculation or, or a number. And so what that means is that there are 20 occurred seven times. <coughs> So if you were calculating the average, you would have to add 20 seven times, which is the same as multiplying 20 by 7, right? So that's why this calculating the mean for the frequency distribution, if you go ahead and take the, the number, which is 20, times its frequency, and then add it up, that'll work also. So what they're saying is, instead of having on your computer to have to do 19 plus, 20 plus, 20 plus, 20 plus, 20 plus, 20 plus, like that, you could do 19 plus, 20 times 7 plus, 21 times 4 plus, are you with me? And then divide by the total number of cars, which was 62. Okay? So um, if you want to compute the mean, you're going to want to do 19 plus 20 times 7 plus 21 times 4 plus 22 times 6 and then just continue that on, right? I don't want to write these all out, I'm feeling lazy. Okay, and then I would divide that by 62 and that will give me my mean. Now, it's kind of fun because in Excel, you can actually input this data and then just make a third column where it does the multiplication and then finally, and then add them up and divide by the total. So there's lots of ways that you can make this work. Now, if you wanted to use our cool website, you would, I, I think you're going to have to actually type in 19 and then 27s and then 21 fours and then 22 sixes. So that's a little bit tedious if you want to use the website to do it. Okay. So I'm going to choose not to use the website. I'm going to use the formula just with a, a basic calculator. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do parentheses. 19, obviously, times 1, so I don't need to do that. Plus 20 times 7 plus 21 times 4 plus 22 times 6 plus 23 times 5 plus 24 times 7 plus 25 times 8, plus 26 times 8, 27 times 2, plus 28 times 5, plus 29 times 7, plus 30 times 2. Close that parenthesis and then divide by the total number of items, which is 62. Now, I hope somebody, is anybody else doing this with me? Because I may have messed it up. 24 point, anyone else? Yeah? Uh, oh, it's looking good. That's what the answer sheet got. Okay, so 24.6 is probably the mean. It's messy, huh? Sorry. Okay. So that, that one's a little bit, there, and there are actually other ways to do it, but that's kind of easy enough to get the... Get it going there. Okay, so this is the mean. Now, 
Um, this is kind of, it's kind of fun, the way that you can compute the median. Because remember there was this formula for the place of the median? The median place was um, n plus 1 divided by uh, 2, right? So there were 62 data values, 62 plus 1 divided by 2, 63 divided by 2, which is uh, 21.5, right? So the median is located between 21 and 22 in the placing of this data, right? So because of the way the data is presented to you, you can count to find the location 21, 22, right? Follow along. 19 is in place 1, right? 20 takes up places 2 to 8 because there are 7 of them. Are we there? All right, 21 takes up place 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then, then we'll have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, um, 21, and 22. Oh, God, you, know, you guys are all wondering how 63 divided by 2 is 21? Yeah. yeah, you're a little slow in your critique of me. Crap, now I have to rethink this whole, this is a bad recording. <laughs> Is that the second <laughs> test word? I think I said suck and crap in this video. All right. <laughs> Let me try it again. Is everybody okay that the place is 31.5? I'm looking for the 31.5th place. Oh, come on. It's your own fault. All right, now, is everyone okay that, that 20 is in the 8th spot? Is that is your brain okay with that? or do you? Because we have 19, and then we have 7 20s. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven. So if I was giving it a rank, you know, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the eighth place. 20 takes on, there are 20s up until the eighth spot. I have to get to the 31st spot. And I don't want to have to write all these out, so I'm just going to count. Okay, you ready? Here we go. All right, so this 21 is going to be in 9, 10, 11, and 12. 22 is going to be in 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I can stop. Okay? What I have discovered is that the number, the miles per gallon of 25 is in the 31st and the 32nd spot. And so the 31.5 is going to be 25 plus 25 divided by 2, or just 25. Does that make sense? So my median, this matches to 25 miles per gallon. So I had to, I had to think there. It's sad that I've, I've already rehearsed this, and I still mess it up. Okay, uh, so we have our mean, we have our median. Mode should be easy. Mode is the one that occurs most often. There are two modes in this problem. Mm -hmm. It's a tie. There's 25 miles per gallon and 26 miles per gallon. If, if none of them occur more than once, you, you select no mode. There's no mode. Okay. And then finally, mid-range is also easy. Mid-range is the lowest, which is 19, plus the highest, which is 30, divided by 2. So 49 divided by 2, which is 24.5? Uh, yes? Okay. okay, so that was that display, when, and that's called a frequency table, is that type of display. Now, the next type of display of data you have actually seen before because I have given your test scores in a stem and leaf display as well. And what this means in this case, as I'm looking, and this was very much how it was when I would give your test scores, the stems would be the tens digit and the leaves would be the units digits. 
So the way you pick the data out of this is 20s, in the 20s, you had a, a 9, a 0, and a 2. So the data for in the 20s is 29, 20, and 22. So this tells you the tens digit, and that's the ones digit. 29, 20, 22. All right? So this stem is the 60s. So this is 64, 62, 62, and also 65, right? And then we have 86 and 83. So now I have my data. So I'm going to go to the fun um, website to... Oh, where did it go? Oh, it went to sleep. Is it there now? Okay. So if I go to my fun website, I can clear this out and put in some new data. So 29, 20, 22, 64, 62, 62, 65, 86, and 83. And then I go to calculate. And it says there's nine data values. It gives the mean as 54.5 in this case, 8. The median is 62, the mode is 62, and look how sweet they put it in descending order for me, and that's going to help me find the mid-range real quickly. Right? Everybody happy? Okay, and so I find, I'll come back to my laptop. I found the mean to be 54.8. Is everybody okay with calculating the mean? Say you just have your phone calculator. You just add the numbers up and divide by, in this case, it would be 9 because there were 9 total. The median is, um, what you have to do is you have to order the numbers from highest to lowest. So you have to do, you do, see, in order, it would be, I'll go ahead and show you. This is few enough that it's not that big of a deal. So 20, 22, 29, 62, 62, 64, 65, 83, and 86. That's just ordered. Ordered data. And then because there are nine, the mid one, the median is going to have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, each four on each side. Or if you do nine plus one divided by two, that's five. So the fifth, fifth ordered data is the median. And so that's 62. The mode is the number that occurs the most often, which clearly is 62. And the um, mid-range is the lowest plus the highest divided by 2, which is 106 divided by 2 or 103. 53. Or 53. <laughs> All right, here's another way that you can display the data. This is a, a frequency uh, chart, a frequency distribution. And so we have, um, and the way you read this chart is that 10 occurs three times. 11 occurs how many times? What's the frequency of 11? Four times, right. 12 occurs seven times. Are you all seeing? Okay. 13 occurs four times and... 14 occurs three times. So um, the, the sample size N is going to be the number of those numbers of occurrences. So it's the 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 4 plus 3, right? So your sample size is um, 21, right? And then your mean then you'll have to do the, the frequency formula to find the mean. You have 10, it occurs three times, so you'll do 10 times three plus 11 times four plus 12 times seven plus 13 times four plus 14 times three, and you divide that by the total number, which was 21. Okay, does that make sense, how we'll calculate? The other way you could calculate the mean is if you use the little computer, you're going to have to put 10 in three times and 11 in four times and 12 in six times, right? Okay, 
So I come in here and I can just type this into the calculator. Parenthesis. So we did 10 times 3 plus 11 times 4 plus 12 times 7 plus 13 times 4 plus 14 times 3. Close parenthesis, divide by 21. And I got 12. Okay? So that's my mean. All right, the median we can do with our little counting trick, all right? There are 21 data sets. So um, if you do 21 plus 1, that's 22. Divide by 2 is 11. So you're looking for the 11th spot, all right? 10 takes up the first three. Then 11 takes up 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 12 is 8, 9, 10, 11, and you can stop because 12 is in the 11th spot. Okay, so the median is, is 12. It, the 12 is in the 11th spot. So the median is 12. Is everybody okay? The other way you can do that is just write out the data and pick the middle one. So you could write out 10 threes and then write out four 11s and then write out seven 12s and then uh, four 13s and three 14s and then you would just pick the one that's in the middle. In this case, the middle would be the 11th spot because you have 21 data sets. If you pick the 11, you'll have 10 on each side. Right? Okay. The mode is what? The mode is the one that occurs the most often. Which number occurred the most often? Very nice. And then your mid-range is your lowest plus your highest divided by 2. So 10 plus 14 divided by 2, which again is 12. So this data is actually what we call perfectly symmetric, which is in the world of statistics, the I Ching of awesomeness. It never happens in the real world, but if it did, it's really cool. We love symmetric data because it's right in the middle and the people pair off on either side, so you can do a lot with predictions of behaviors and whatever, uh, different things if you have perfectly symmetric data. Like a, a teacher, uh, in, in theory, you design a test, you're hoping that it's perfectly centered, you know, most of the class made whatever, and then it went on the other side, you know. You don't like it necessarily to be skewed one way or the other. I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind everybody making an A. All right, and use the display of data to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the mid-range. Okay, so this is a little bit different display, but I'm guessing you guys are probably on track now. Um, the mean is going to be, first, how many, how many data values do we have? Well, what you can do is you can just count. You have 110, you have 311, so that's 4, and then you have 512, so that's uh, 9, and then you're going to add a 6, so that's... Um, 15, and then uh, 16, 17, and then 18. So you have 18 data values. Is everybody okay with how I calculated, counted them? You do 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1. So 8, 8, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. All right. Now to calculate the mean, you're going to do, all right, the 10 occurs once. The 11 occurs three times, so you multiply 11 by 3. The 12 occurs five times. The 13 occurs 16, the six times. The 14 occurs two times, and the 15 occurs once. And you're going to divide that by the total number of data points that you have, which is the 18. So if you wanted to use the little website, You'd have to do 10, comma, 11, comma, 11, comma, 11, comma, 12, comma, you know, 12, five times, and 13, whatever. You get a picture. Okay, so I do parentheses 10 plus 11 
times 3 plus 12 times 5 plus 13 times 6 plus 14 times 2 plus 15. And I divide that by 18. And so I get 12.4 is my mean. My median, my median is my middle value. So I could write them all down, or I can count with the places. The median place, or the median location, is 18 plus 1 divided by 2, 19 divided by 2, which is uh, 9.5. So I need data value 9 and data value 10 the ninth and 10th location if they're ordered. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 is 13. So 12 is in the uh, ninth spot and 13 is in the 10th spot. So it's gonna be 12 plus 13 divided by two or 12.5 is my median. And then my mode is the number that occurs the most often. You should see that right from the chart. Which, which score occurs the most often? 13. There were six 13s. So my mode is 13. And then my last thing I want to do is mid-range, which is the lowest plus the highest. So that's... Um, 10 plus 15 divided by 2, so that's 25 divided by 2, or 12.5. Cool? So this is fun, right? This is good stuff. Easy. Okay, so play with the, your homework for a little bit.